Hello Stranger Things fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris, uh, Stranger Things 4 just had its second part release. I already did a video where I broke down my thoughts on volume one of Stranger Things 4. You can check that out, link in the description if you'd like. But now it's time for us to go full spoilers with Stranger Things volume two. Even though it was only two episodes long, it totaled four hours and man, was it one grand epic finale. So what I'll be doing here for you guys is not only giving you my spoiler review, mentioning some of my favorite moments, some of the dips, the things I hope they do next Next season but also just speculating and theorizing what will happen now in stranger things 5 it's already confirmed it's gonna happen and we even have some details along with what will happen but along with that i'm also need you guys to turn that comment section into a full spoiler discussion what were your highs for these last two episodes what were your lows did the person you predict was gonna die end up dying or did you hope another person would end up dying as well as your thoughts and theories to what you think will happen the next season all right so just diving straight into it here let's begin with episode 8 that was titled papa what were you trying to do here, Stranger Things? There was a lot of cool things to happen in this episode, but it was just the aftermath of one of the dullest parts of this season for me. This whole back and forth and experimenting to get Eleven her powers back. I understand it was necessary so that she could get her powers back. Also, to give us the backstory on one slash Henry slash Vecna. But man, did I feel like they just extended that out so much throughout the season where I was just finally happy the place blew up and they were done with it. I was also cheering and hoping for Eleven just to kill off Papa because the guy I know means well but he has such horrible ways about going about it that i don't understand why the show tried giving us a little sympathizing moment when he finally got shot down and killed and is having this last goodbye with 11 it's like good let's move on man but in that moment it was also pretty awesome how 11 was able to take down that helicopter and kind of freeing herself of the whole situation if i'm not wrong would this be like the first big intentional kill by 11 i feel like that was kind of a pretty big deal for her but other than that the other major thing that happened out of episode a is trying to set everyone up for their vital part in this big mission that I think is my only drawback to this finale. I don't have a lot of negative things to say about it because overall I was very pleased with this finale and in fact I was over the moon excited with a lot of moments. But my one continuous gripe this season was just man so many subplots. There were like eight ten different storylines going on at once. Not all of them were interesting and I thought by these last two episodes they would all come together and be working together but instead, they were separated across out, but still had a very convoluted, important part of the mission. Like, my jaw was kind of on the ground how they managed to give every subplot a key part of this mission that if one of them messes up, the whole thing goes sideways. Still, even with that tiny little gripe, when everyone's storylines started aligning and the climactic part of their missions were all happening at the same time and they were cutting away back and forth, Hopper fighting off a Demogorgon with a sword, Lucas having that battle with Jason, Vecna and Eleven fighting one another, like, it was all heart pounding nail biting moments that it was kind of worth it to have all these separate storylines that all then have giant moments at the same time mixed in with that great running up that hill music so not specifically getting to key moments that just like elevated my heart rate and had me jumping up and down at 2 a.m when i decided to start watching this thing which is also how i know this finale was great because i stayed up didn't go to sleep or take a nap throughout the day i watched it at 2 a.m and all the way through until it was five my time starting things off here with the dustin and eddie situation i uh, we all should have seen this coming, okay? We now see the pattern that the Duffer Brothers have with Stranger Things. They introduce a likable, fun, adoring character at the beginning of the season that will become the big sacrifice at the end of it. They have done it now every season since season two and when fans caught on to this they knew eddie was a goner but they still played it out in a way that even if it was expected it still pulled your heartstrings man eddie did not deserve to go out that way i'm glad he got his big heroic moment and helped dustin out so badass of him playing the guitar in the upside down doing it for chrissy but hearing the words coming out of his mouth as he was going telling dustin i didn't run away this was my year i'm graduating it was making me tear up and feeling so bad because i don't want hawkins thinking eddie was a monster into satanic stuff or things like that boy was a hero and it hit harder when dustin had to explain that to his guardian like oh that, that was awful 11 having the idea to go into the upside down and piggyback off vecna and fight him off super awesome i was getting a lot of nightmare on elm street vibes this season and for good reason the duffer brothers did say this season was inspired by nightmare on elm street which is why we had a nice robert england cameo that i was kind of hoping he did more in this season but you just really feel it when vecna is doing his thing just his design is for Freddy Kruegerish. His voice is Freddy Kruegerish. He even has one hand that is sharp and knived up like Freddy Krueger. But it was so satisfying to see Eleven and Vecna go back one and forth on each other. They created such a great storyline and backstory and history between these two that also 
Very happy they didn't completely kill him off this season. I would have been so mad if Vecna was gone and we get another random Stranger Things monster villain the next season. Feels like a boy's definitely coming back. And I do got some theories on season five on how that'll happen. But probably my standout and most favorite subplot that I wasn't expecting to get that emotionally invested in was Lucas, Max, and the Jason situation in the real world. Wow, was that brutal and crazy. That entire sequence just had me so invested into this situation. You have Max right there that needs to be taken out of the trance whenever she starts floating but then Jason comes out and it starts beating the crap out of Lucas really was not a fan of these jaw characters but I guess that was the whole point of them is to not like them this season because let me tell you every time Lucas was able to get a couple licks in a good hit here and there on Jason I was cheering and clapping saying finish this guy off already still it was then extremely heartbreaking to see Lucas get overpowered and helpless to help Max as she's going up in my mind I had Max as one of the people People that would die this season not because I dislike the character of Max they did a great job this season really getting you into the mindset of Max and making you care about her but it was just the fact that she wrote those letters early on in the season and all her friends never got a chance to read them I just felt like those would come back into play in the end and she would die and the way the Duffer brothers tortured this girl you guys are one sick puppy having her float up there and slowly have limb by limb break as soon as one limb broke I think all of us were like oh she's dead okay th she's not coming back from this she's a goner but no 11 managed to save her in time still I don't know what's going to be left of Max next season I know some people are calling it a cop-out that they kind of did the thing where they died but then not really and they're still kind of alive but it plays in so well to what season five will be about I'll touch upon that in a sec but I just want to talk about the acting that Caleb McLaughlin the guy who plays Lucas and Millie Bobby Brown had in that moment thinking that Max was dead because I believed it it was so horrible and they keep replaying the flashbacks of Max from previous seasons seasons it was them just toying with our hearts so that entire sequence of the finale had to have been my favorite part because it just had me the most invested and scared to what was going on next so now if we have to talk about and speculate things that'll happen in stranger things season five for one we already have the duffer brothers saying that there's going to be a time jump in the next season and that makes sense the pandemic kind of ruined their filming and schedule which is why these kids who are supposed to be playing 15 14 year olds look 17 and 18 so they're going to kind of correct that for the next season and we'll have like a four or five year time jump and they'll be more resembling their age and I'm sure a lot of stuff would have happened in between. But for one, we know Vecna's alive, okay? Will said it himself. We know he has this connection to the Upside Down ever since he got snatched up in season two. And I'm really happy they did not kill off Vecna because boy is a, such a great villain. You don't waste him on one season. You bring him back as the Thanos for the big finale. But speaking on that connection for Will, let's talk about him because I think boy is going to be super vital to how Vecna either comes back or what disrupts this team because they are doing something with Will. They're setting him up like this tragic figure that keeps getting beaten and taken down and neglected by his friends. I'm thinking Will is either going to get turned or he's going to again become someone that gets taken over by Vecna because Vecna looks like he needs a new body. He got completely burned up and dismantled and destroyed thanks to the goats Steve, Nancy, and Robin. And I think that's what Vecna will be doing next season is finding a new body to host to kind of finish off what he started and will is going to be target number one because this season they already set up that his friends mike and whatnot are neglecting him that it's making him so emotionally drained and feel left out everywhere that the catalyst to set him off i think is going to be the death of his brother because i think they're setting up the death of jonathan not just to break will and have him taken over by vecna but because they're also setting back up nancy and steve they need to get together but jonathan is still a nice guy nancy just can't leave him so the boy's gotta die and when jonathan dies the one person that continues to show love and care for Will oh Will's gonna break the other thing that'll be important next season is keeping Max alive because it seems like she's the thing that's stopping the upside down completely coming into our real world for Vecna's ritual to work it said that he needed four victims that would work as a gateway so that the upside down can cross the real world which is why we had the earth crack when Max died for a minute but then came back to life stopping that ritual so having Max in this purgatory is going to be the seesaw throughout the season them trying to find a way to either bring Max out of her coma or 
or make sure that Vecna doesn't kill her in her mind so that he can enter the real world. Which is why I'm not that upset that they copped out with the death of Max because now it works as a really great plot device for the next season. Also, really happy that it looks like everyone is back in Hawkins and even though they'll still probably do the thing where they give us seven, six different storylines, at least now there's a chance for those characters to cross paths because they'll be in the same town. Easier for them to get informed on the situation, have other character dynamics that we missed instead of them just being separated countries apart and only finding out what's going on in the last episode. Along with that, the other wish list I have is, I don't mean to be cruel, I just mean this because it's starting to get ridiculous. You need to kill off more vital people. The cast is getting ridiculously huge. So we are going to get those subplots. And you know they're going to introduce like five or six more characters next season. And it's just becoming too much that you have to create all these random subplots. All these random convoluted ways for them to be important for the mission. When I kind of am missing when Stranger Things felt a little personal. A little smaller. You had these connections. Not everyone just off branching out doing a million different things. But with all that said, count me super happy with this finale. I thought season three was peak Stranger Things. They managed to meet that level with four. Plus they got me really excited to what will be going down in five. The return of Vecna is gonna be fantastic. Really loving everything they have set up for these characters. So now I throw it off to you guys. What did you think of the finale of Stranger Things volume two? Were you happy with it? Is there something you would have done differently? Someone that should have died that didn't? Your predictions for the next season? Anything and everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.